So today is pumpkin ale brew day. It's a little bit early, but I don't want to mess with this around August time frame. I have other things that are going on then. So I wanted to get the beer in the uh, fermenters for the rest of the month of July. Here's my grains. It's a 20 pound uh, Brees pale ale malt and a couple specialty grains. I'll put the recipe link on the uh, description. Pretty simple recipe. I am going to put pumpkin in it. I got the pumpkin roasting in the oven. Half the pumpkin will go in the mash and half the pumpkin will go in the boil. And I'm just about up to dough in temperature here. Still just a little bit short. So it's just a little bit after daybreak and I'm doughing in. I ground these grains in my uh, homemade 3G grain mill. I call it 3G. It's a ghetto grist grinder because it's made out of plywood and homemade parts. But it did the trick. I got a pretty decent crush on the grains. I do have some grains that didn't get crushed. We'll see how that works. That's probably going to affect my efficiency a little bit. So that's about it. I'm going to let them sit for about 15 minutes and I'll start recirculating, get everything all fully incorporated in about an hour. Well, the camera battery died right during the dough in. I'm sure I made some very important point, but anyhow, all the grains are incorporated. I put in uh, 16 ounces of cooked pumpkin. Now, what I did with the pumpkin was I uh, put it in the oven on about 375. We have a convection oven, so it was able to circulate the air around it, and it kind of caramelized it and dried it out just like a pumpkin pie. So half of that goes in here, and once I transfer this out to the boil kettle, I'm getting a little pump cavitation here. Anyhow, once I transfer the uh, wort to the boil kettle, I'll add in the rest of the pumpkin. But the majority of the flavor for this adjunct beer comes from the addition of the spices. So a subtle amount's better than too much, and this beer's not for me, it's for friends and my wife. So be starting to mash out here pretty soon. And by the way, this uh, this recipe is the first one with my new homemade 3G grist mill, my ghetto grain grinder. Um, and this recipe lends itself perfectly to using rice hulls or uh, what the Germans call malt conditioning or wet milling of the malts. That way you get bigger husks and less chance of a stuck sparge. Although I haven't had any full-on stuck sparges, um, I've had a little pump cavitation pulling out of the bottom of the false bottom, and I've had uh, real close to slow flow. Once you put the pumpkin in there, it's just enough catalyst to make it a real muddy mess. So rice hulls or a coarser grind, or like I said, next time I'm gonna experiment with the malt conditioning. By the way, it's starting to get hot out. I gotta get going here. So just prior to mash out, I'm seeing a bricks reading of about 15. So this is a 1060 beer all day long. I'm about ready to start the uh, filling of the boil kettle. Nothing in there yet. So here we go. So I'm going to swap over my Herms coil hose to... Uh, boil kettle fill hose. And the valves open and away we go. Sure enough, filling up the boil kettle. A fairly nice clear bore loft in spite of my very fine grain. So the end beer might be a pretty clear beer. Usually pumpkin ales tend to be a little bit uh, muted or muddled I guess is the word but we'll see what I actually end up with here oh yeah it's on on the plumbing since this is a single infusion I'm mashing out now I'm gonna sparge these grains with the rest of the water that's in the hot liquor tank and I'm gonna pull off of the bottom I'm gonna relocate this recirculation hose 
so that the output side of the pump goes into the top of the Herms tank. And then that'll just be hot water that goes in there on the top of the grains. And I'll, I'll do it about the same rate I'm discharging. I'm waiting for the water to heat up just a little bit more before I start. I'm not, I actually don't have a temp probe in the hot liquor tank, so I'm going to measure it through the pickup probe in the top of the return line in the mash tun. And I'm shooting for about 168 degree water going in on top of the grains, maybe 170, because they will lose some thermal energy by the time I get to the bottom here. I'm still working through the mash out. I'm just past the seven and a half gallon point and just kind of estimating I probably have about maybe three gallons of fluid in this remaining because about five gallons of volume was grain. So I'll probably have to add another two or three gallons of sparge water to get to my pre-boil volume of about 12 gallons. I'm trying to shoot for a 10 gallon batch of total finished beer so I'll probably stop the boil at about ten and a half or maybe ten and three quarters that will allow for some true settling out of the beer and that should give me enough to fill two cases and uh, one corny keg fully all right so I have collected enough wort and I'm gonna switch over to the boil element so here we go, I got uh, 116 set, which is arbitrary. It's not a manual processor, so I can't actually control the uh, percentage of current, but it's a smaller element. So I just run this slightly above the boiling temperature and it keeps it at a rolling boil. And I've yet to scorch a wart, so I'm right at about 10 gallons volume right there, that second embossment on the keg. Bring it up to a boil, put my hop additions in there and my uh, the remainder of my very important pumpkin flavor. I'm gonna put the uh, pumpkin pie spices in after the boil or I've even thought about a little dry hopping but like I said I'm gonna keep it fairly uh, fairly small amount maybe one teaspoon post boil and one teaspoon split between the two five gallon ferments just so that the spice doesn't overpower the beer flavor. I might actually be able to drink some of it then. All right, so I'm real close to getting to boiling here. And the remainder of my pumpkin mush is going in the beer right now. I'm gonna have to stir it so it doesn't burn on the heating element. That's uh, what little sugars are in that will add to the alcohol content. And my hop additions are pretty sim simple. It's not a very hoppy beer. I got uh, one ounce of sterling going in at, uh, for 60 minutes. And then I have two ounces of uh, U.S. Hallertau hops. One at 60 minutes and one at 15 minutes. So I'll uh, incorporate those here shortly. I'm sure a lot of you are... Uh, familiar with this, but I'm still fascinated by how manageable the hot break is with the all-electric system. I've yet to have a boil over and the proteins seem to incorporate pretty quickly into the boil. I suppose by the time this beer is ready, you boys up there in Minnesota will be dealing with your first snowfall. In all seriousness, I couldn't, uh, couldn't have improved my beers to the point that I have if it wasn't for Four or five of you guys posting your videos. You know who you are. Um, Jake Keeler with your mad scientist mind and Michael Dawson with your big city vocabulary. Of course, uh, Chip Walton with his rugged good looks. And Don Osborne. I Come to think of it, I don't know what Osborne's contributed. Maybe a cold basement cellar? Anyhow, thank you, gentlemen. I make a lot better beer because of you. From the heart. Here's that hot break in real time. So you can see a scummy layer there of uh, what would normally be a problem in a gas-fired boil. But very quickly as this gets from just a gentle simmer to a rolling boil, it just dives down under and gets pulled into the, into the mix pretty quickly. 
So much, much easier. I'm so glad that I went electric. If you haven't built one, it might not be too late, but I wouldn't wait. So we're boiling. So in goes the Heller towel. I need a camera operator. Somebody that just likes to do video. There's the Heller towel and then the uh, Sterling over here. Ooh, those smell very piney comparatively to the Heller towel. Maybe it's because they're sealed better. Those other ones were from the LHBS, the local homebrew shop, and I think they're grown in somebody's backyard. But this recipe doesn't call for a lot of hops anyways, so the hop profile is pretty minimal. We're trying to get pumpkin flavor. Well, interestingly, I was just about to put in my Oral Flock tablet and the last of my hop edition. I got my chilling coil in there. And uh, the ground fault interrupter tripped the circuit to my control panel. So the power comes in down there. I suspect I have a problem in there. It's probably because it's so blasted hot. Because I still haven't built a counterflow wart chiller, I'm using this immersion chiller. And then I'm spraying the uh, wastewater, which is about, I don't know, 105 degrees or so on the sides. And that really helps speed up my cooldown rate, especially on these. Well, everything's cooled down, and I'm filling the carboy in the fermentation bucket. Sanitize those. Plopping the lid on there shortly. Everything settled down nicely. These are nice and clear for a beer with so many muddy uh, adjuncts in it. it it's really a, a nice. Well, I think my camera battery died. Anyways, like they say in Hollywood, it's in the can. One five gallon carboy and one seven gallon fermenter bucket. Now I need to clean up. Uh, I'm out of IPA too so I'm going to have to troubleshoot that errant solid state relay or whatever's causing that to trip the breaker. By the way my uh, spice addition was a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice and one teaspoon of cinnamon. So I'll let you know how the beer was. Thanks for watching.